So let's call the regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order. It's 7 p.m. on Wednesday, February 21st, 2018. Diane, would you please take the roll? Uh, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? Here. Diane? Yes. Patty? Here. Linda is running late. Here. All right, let's uh, stand to uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I'm going to uh, take the liberty of taking one matter um, out of um, the... the uh, Agenda, and uh, because it's very special, we would like to recognize um, a long-term employee who is retiring, and we're going to be missing her very much. Although I understand she's still around a little bit, anyway. Is that right? And in what capacity? Can you tell us? Uh, a digital digital services librarian. She is going to continue working on the tech desk and doing trainings. Uh, and how, how frequently might we be able to see you after that? Okay. Uh, few times a week. You have to talk to my supervisor. So she's retiring and she's going to stay? Part-time. How many hours? Hello? Hello? So anyway, uh, we really like to uh, recognize you and the fact that you put in 18 years of full-time service, and uh, uh, you've really, you know, helped so many people in the district, including myself. <laughs> I've been down in your department and asked some questions that you've really been very helpful about. So thank you, thank you very much, and we appreciate again your service to the district and your continuing service on a part-time basis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to see people who work for a long time here. So uh, this is not unusual. <laughs> uh, well, 18 years isn't the longest. <laughs> well, we want to appreciate it. Though. Thanks very, very much. Very kind. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Show the cake with the candles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, let's. Go. To approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of January 17th, 2018. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? All right, Carolyn, can I have a roll? Carolyn, I'm sorry, I don't know if Carolyn heard. She no, I, I don't oh. have any, but thank you. Okay. okay. <coughs> thank you. Okay. Um, could I have a roll call? Uh, Karen? <coughs> yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Yeah. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Ken? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, while you were uh, doing the roll call, I took the liberty of getting the list of people who have registered for public comment. So I'm just going to go in the order of um, that people have registered. So first I have Elizabeth Houlihan. Would you like to um, step up? And who oh, wants to just step over here where the board can see you? That'd be great. Sorry. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Houlihan. I'm with the New Yorker Discussion Group, which meets on Monday mornings from 9.30 to 11.30. And I'm here to thank you for hosting this group. <coughs> uh, we started in early January with about six people, and this week we had 12 people attending. And so um, we asked people, where did you hear about us? And so one person saw us on the marquee as they were driving by, and other people have seen it just on the calendar or on the website. And one of our members is actually reading the New Yorker through the library uh, online through Flipster. So I just wanted you to know that that's being used. And we greatly appreciate uh, you having us. And then, I've talked to other people who have said, oh, I wish I could come, but I, I work during the day. So eventually, you might consider doing an evening group. Um, uh, not only are people showing up once, but they're coming back, <laughs> which is a mark of success. So I want to, again, 
Thank you so much for hosting the group. Is it, is it open to anybody? Oh, yes, absolutely. We absolutely. Have come to join us. Oh, we'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nine thirty in the morning. Yes. <coughs> oh, um, if we get too big, or we, like twelve people starting to go crowded down there, yeah. I think we can get up to maybe fifteen in that room. But is there another room we can be? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Marcula, you are, you're next on our list uh, this evening. I have in this box here six hundred and thirty or forty emails, and they pertain to library personnel doing outreach to schools, individual classrooms at a time, okay? Now, all of these schools have taxpayer-funded libraries, qualified librarians. Uh, they have thousands of books in the libraries. If the schools don't have a particular book the teacher wants, the teacher should have instructed the school librarian to obtain that book. Lesson plans are drawn up months in advance, plenty of time for the school librarians to obtain the needed books. This is not the mission of the library to supply these books except in an emergency. And then it's the teacher's job to come to the library and get the books, not the library shipping the books. A lot of these have arrangements, what time can we come in? And the teacher says, well, you're going to interrupt the science class, you're going to interrupt the math class. They come in and they're t talking to 25 kids at a time. It's just so much time involved. And there's no way to measure the return on this. You don't know if any more kids came in the library or not, because most of them aren't walking distance from the library. They've got to convince their parents to come. So this could be done more efficiently by maybe talking to the school librarians or getting the school librarians material and then having them make the presentation. Because all these kids go to the library at least once a week in school. And, and either the school librarians are failing or I don't know what's going on. But we're wasting a lot of money and time. We've got five different people here that appear to be involved in full-time doing this. They're taking books back and forth, <coughs> presenting books to teachers. When teachers have ready, what's wrong with the books they used for the last fifth grade class a year ago? Why did they need to change uh, the, the lesson plan or something like that? It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, there's no way to measure what, what the outcome of all of this is. So um, this is basically nothing more than uh, we're paying five people to, to do something that has immeasurable outcomes. So uh, I think we could probably use these people somewhere else in, in some other capacity in the library rather than doing this. To the five people, uh, you're getting that from the email? Yes. Some of these have as many as 200 pages of emails here. And, and these, if you look at them, you can get them from Freedom of Information. Some of these are involved. In, you can see that each one of these emails took at least an hour to write, in many cases, sometimes longer. And they're bantering back and forth, making arrangements. Can we do lunch together? I don't know who's paying for the lunch. It's, it's just, um, you know, can I deliver these books? I'm gonna, we've got people going out delivering books, bringing books back. They're getting paid for uh, uh, transportation reimbursement. Uh, it's just beyond what the scope of the library is supposed to be. And we're paying, us as taxpayers, we're paying a lot of money to these schools, and they're not failing. It's just that we're stepping in and when, when we shouldn't be. Okay, um, next, uh, David Carabotta. Mm -hmm. Yes. David Carabotta from yeah. Niles. Hi. Um, over half a million dollars. I was disappointed. I'm looking for, to the government bodies that I fund with my tax dollars to accomplish very good things, but responsibly. There's no reason why, if you look at all the numbers and all the projects and all the things that are going on in the library, there's no reason why the levy from the library couldn't have remained the same. There's also no reason why the levy of the library could have been cut by 5%. If you cut the levy by 5%, you make a deal with me, and I make a deal with you. Every dollar I spend on the library, I get back a nickel. There's no reason why, with all the intelligence around this table, that that didn't happen. 
If that did happen, that would save the taxpayers minimum ballpark $375,000. Not only did we not cut by 5%, we went up 2%. There is no reason financially for that increase. That increase, ballpark $150,000. Total $525,000 with the last levy. When is it going to stop? And I have an answer for the residents of Niles. When it comes to the Niles Main Library, it's not. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, one other point I want to mention. Uh, in your procedure, I forgot to mention, bill pay. I don't understand why the board doesn't have bill pay. Governmental bodies have bill pay. What bill pay is, is each of you as auditors receive a summary of all the bills paid, but then you're also provided with a copy of the check and a copy of the invoice. There's a time period taken by the board as part of their meeting where they're able to go through those bills and then make inquiry if they want to as to what these bills are for before they're paid. That may be an idea that this board should consider. Thank you. Okay. All right. I believe that's the last request that we have for public comment, so we'll turn to the treasurer's report. Tim? Okay. Uh, we remain <coughs> kind of boring again, which is good for the treasurer's report. Uh, January is the seventh month of fiscal year, which means we are 58.3% of the way through our fiscal budget. Uh, page eight. Our revenues are running uh, slightly under budget at six thousand three ninety one. Uh, Let me start over from its boring. <laughs> so, PK. I still got the big one, right? Oh, yeah. I get the oh, yeah. big one. Yeah. All right. Uh, on page 8, the salaries uh, are running under budget by 76000 which is due primarily to uh, under budget spending for the library pages and the library number one, the library one line items. What's the library one line? Librarian one, uh, payroll, librarian one. Okay, on page eight there? Uh-huh. Okay. I just want to highlight it. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, page nine. Our library materials are slightly over budget at 60%. Uh, but as I said, we're, you know, we're kind of shooting for 58.3. Uh, the library operating expenditures, they're all, uh, overall category continues to be well under budget, yet, uh, 77,000 under budget, which is great. Page 10, general and admin. Category is running under budget by 26,000, page 16. Uh, page 11, fringe benefits, the same as last month, as we talked about, categories running over budget, but it was due to our one-time payment of 532,000 to the Illinois Municipal Fund, which we, as a board, approved at the November meeting. So that obviously that'll continue on from that. And page 12, the, the summary, all items are running on or under budget except the workman's comp. Again, it's uh, a one-time payment that's not spread over 12 months. And our total expenditures are currently about 3.3% under budget. And this money we put up. Do you have anything about the uh, uh, income statement? All right. Are I there have any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Sure. I'm, I'm trying to understand the employee fringe benefit running over budget. What page are you on? I'm looking at your um, financial report where you commented on the employee fringe benefits. Page 11. It says, same as last month's category is running over budget. Right. So our $532,000 increase was not included in the... Um, we didn't plan for that, is that what you're saying? So our budget's over for the entire year? No, it actually wasn't included. Uh, if you look at uh, the two comparative columns, year-to-date actual, year-to-date budget, 
We're in the middle, approximately. Uh, we're very, we're very close. As a matter of fact, year to date actual is about nine thousand dollars under year to date budget for the category. So I, I, I think what Tim meant to say was that the five hundred thirty-two thousand was an unusual expenditure, but it was budgeted. Okay, and that's been repeated for two months. So that's what's confusing me. We made one payment for five hundred and thirty. $2,000, but according to what you're looking at, um, the budget is actually under? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, okay, then I'll just scratch this. All right, and then again. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, we're, we're, I'm talking about the deferred compensation, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're actually at 91%, which is over budget. But my point being is that we had that one-time thing. So if you, if you compare... Um, if you compare that expenditure to taking the total for the year and dividing it by 12 and having 8.33% of the budget that per month, you're absolutely right. Right. But we accounted for having that $532,000 right. payment in uh, December, I believe. So that it's actually part of the year to date budget. Right. I mean, if, if any of that makes sense. I mean, that's kind of a final. Yeah, we, we expect that it'll even out by the end of the year. Is, is essentially, is right? what we're yeah. trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to point out that the date is running over budget due to that one-time payment. You understand, Carol? What Thank I'm you. To I understand, yes. Yeah. One more question. Uh, library materials, page 9, slightly over budget at 60%. Um, it is February, and I'm trying to figure out if that's because materials are purchased on a calendar year rather than fiscal year. Is that a bump? Just like we usually see in July, is that what this may be? It's, a, it's only slightly over Tim's benchmark of 58.33 percent. So you know, for 1.67 percent, I mean, it's well within tolerances at least at this point of year. So it is not over budget, 60 percent. No, 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 no. Right, 60 percent is not budget. That's what caught my eye. 60 percent right. of the total expense. Because that's what it says over budget at 60 percent. Yeah, it's okay, 60 percent. See the actual of uh, a percentage. And total library materials says 60%. So I didn't say it's over budget by 60%. I'm saying it's at 60%, which is slightly over budget. It is good to declare that. Okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, any other questions? All right. Okay, I have uh, one more thing to talk about. It's part of the Treasurer's report. So, um, several times now, some trustees have questioned Greg's credentials. Mm. I don't want to say what it's going No, I, I think okay, Dennis, it's, it's, what, been right, it's, it's been Dennis, as a Dennis, Dennis, I need I'm to know talking. Who's, who's Dennis, Dennis, is Dennis, I'm credential. talking right now, so let me finish. Let when me you finish, ask questions, I will answer questions. Then you can ask me questions. But you know what? The great part about this job is I don't report to you. I so I can ask you questions. Oh, I didn't wow. say you did. All right. So. I want to, if I can be, continue on without being interrupted, that'd be great. I wouldn't touch me because I'm sick. All right, let me continue. So, uh, several times, a number of trustees have questioned Greg's credentials, uh, somewhat insultingly, I might add. And uh, I just want to briefly go over a couple of the things that I found out. Greg has a bachelor's in finance and accounting from DePaul. He got an MBA from Northwestern, God sakes. Certified public accountant. He's a certified internal auditor. Uh, he's an accredited investment fiduciary <laughs> analyst. He's got 10, million, uh, 10 years public accounting as an audit manager. He's got eight years as a corporate controller uh, for a $550 million company. He's got three years as a uh, regional controller for a $1.6 billion company. Uh, he's got uh, any number of years working for organizations that have a far greater uh, budget than ours. Uh, I just want to point these things out because uh, I have no bounds whatsoever about Greg's credentials or his ability to uh, work with our budget or our, our financial systems. Uh, he has helped us save uh, over $3 million. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Due to Greg's um, persistence, I might add, we have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars in our IMRF funding by prepaying, which is a great thing that Greg pointed out to us. And moving forward, I hope that we can continue to be adult in our interactions with our staff, 
and uh, refrain from any disparaging comments about them personally, uh, any name calling, or any other such comments. Uh, I believe that our staff is highly qualified and really don't deserve those kinds of comments. That's all I have to say, and I hope that uh, we can continue to respect each other as we move forward. Okay. I am not finished, guys. I want to know who made uh, those comments that you said. Well, they're in the record. You'd have to go get them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. I think if you're going to call out at the meeting and say that people are making disparaging comments, uh, I think we should all know who is making right. those comments. I believe you requested, Dennis, go get a book from the library on accounting. Which is did, did I say that he should do that? Yeah. No, I didn't. And I, I can check that on the record, too, because I didn't understand. You can check it because you can remember saying it? I can remember saying that why don't we go to, you know, you were asking exactly. us, the board was asking us, Diane was asking us, we need to have some type of a, an idea about a budget. And I, says, I said flippantly, I said, well, I'll bet we have some nice books in the library. And I think if you look and back why? at the record, and if why? you look back at the record, I, he, he's not asking for a budget. Uh, Diane's in charge of doing the budget, and sh she said, I've got to start Susan, on it right Susan, now. Susan. 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 I'm sorry. I'm just a little upset because I'm tired of what's going on in this library meeting. It, it's time again. I've been really? pointed out, it's been pointed out that I'm making disparaging remarks about, both about Susan and Greg. And I've never once, never once said anything bad about them in this room. Never once. And I would like you to go back and find that. It, I, what I do get is I get people rolling their eyes and smiling and laughing. But that's what I get. You know yeah. what I get? Is that on record, too? I get comments from you quite often, which kind of annoy me, too. So we're even. So I'm, I'm just saying that I don't make comments. I've never said that he does not know what he's doing. I don't uh, say that he doesn't have... Uh, these credentials that you talked about. I have never said that. Never. I didn't say that. Ever. So uh, I'm trying to find out where the Did disparaging comments and remarks are coming from because you're putting it on the record. So uh, Carolyn has her hand up. Um, actually, um, I uh, reviewed the previous month's video before every meeting, which I did yesterday when my computer was working. And um, Dennis during a discussion with Susan, said then maybe we should go into this library and get a book on accounting. I'm sure we have many. There was never any indication. No. It was meant for, I don't know how Greg even got into the subject area. He has been quite silent the past couple months during our bantering. But Tim, since you brought up... Well, having, actually, let me bring that up. No, I'm not finished. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. Since you brought up having respect for one another, yeah. I think that's very important. I agree. And as trustees, I would like to remind all of us that we should not be rude to the taxpayers who pay for this library to be here, especially when, as a trustee, we disagree with whatever information they bring to us. And on numerous occasions, you have exploded, not only to me, but I've also seen you do it to taxpayers. And I don't, I'll, I don't think that's right. So let's... I, no, I'm just going to hear the country. Thank you I've very much. You can contradict all you want. I was here point. after a meeting when he attacked, verbally attacked, a taxpayer. And I walked away. And as president, when that happens during a meeting, I think it's in, within your jurisdiction to put an end to it. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Well, it's occurred several times I, in our meeting. I don't think I've ever seen that. Okay, can I uh, defend myself? All right, and then, then we, then we should move on. Back. Yes. So, uh, I did treat Joe McCoola rudely after my last meeting. I apologize to Joe. I asked him to send whatever materials he had to me in an email, and I would fully consider them. Uh, I have to say, at the end of the meeting, I was pretty tired, and he came up to me, and, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have reacted the way I did. So, I, I apologize to, I, to him, to the rest of the board, to the taxpayers in general, and uh, other than that, we've had several heated arguments uh, at our meetings, of which I have 
also apologize if I ever lost my temper. Um, and, you know, going forward, I'm going to try not to do that, and I am working on that. Carolyn? Okay. How's that? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, fine. Let's move on then. Um, I have this uh, handout that was just passed around. Uh, I can ask Greg to, um, as part of the treasurer's report, to um, talk a little bit about the, you know, IMRF looks at oh. its rate at the end of the year, and okay. so the, there is a video from the, um, I believe it's the new executive director, talking about what the, st their funding status is now at the end of the year. Very short video, but it will give you a better idea than us just talking. I'm Ryan Collins, new Executive Director of the IMRF. I'm here today to bring you some good news about our 2017 financial returns. We finished the year really strong. You might ask, how strong is that? Well, we had earnings in 2017 of over 15%. That is double our expected annual return of 7.5%, which is absolutely fantastic. We are so proud of our investment team. Seven and a half, fifteen and a half percent. What does that mean? In dollars, that was over five billion with the B. Five billion dollars was added to your portfolios during 2017. We couldn't be happier about that. What does this mean though about your funded status? Well, you all know what that means. We were a year ago, we were 88% funded, which is really terrific, relatively speaking. But going forward, we're now at 97% funded, which is really part of our goal. Our goal is to one day be 100% funded again. Why? Because that really is our promise to you and to all of our retirees. And not just our retirees today, but for future generations. This is a long-term investing strategy. Speaking of the long term, We've had good results this year, 15%. But if you go back 36 years to when the state legislature allowed IMRF to diversify its portfolio, during that period of time, we have had an annual rate of over 10%. So I am really thrilled to be a part of this organization and really proud of the investment team that we have. I have complete confidence in them. And this isn't just good news for you and for the IMRF, this is good news for the whole state. Because as our investment returns are better, that saves money for municipalities across the state, which means they can take valuable resources and allocate them to other vital projects to all of your communities. So what we do here impacts everybody in the state and we could not be happier about that good news. So on that note, I'll end it. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. great news. Okay. So what I, uh, what I passed around is, is the investment return summary for the uh, 12 months ending uh, December 31st. What I've highlighted on, on the page is the uh, uh, is the return figures that uh, we just heard about. Uh, for the total fund, it's 15.7%. But, you know, down below, it's broken into different types of investment. Domestic equity, international equity, fixed income, real estate, and alternative investments. Alternative investments is things, uh, are things like private equity and timber and things of that nature. Um, so you can, you can see uh, how IMRF did compared to the number below each highlighted number, which is what the benchmark is. So what they do is they create a benchmark for themselves, and they say, if we're going to invest in domestic equity, and we're going to um, emulate a style, maybe they're going to follow the S&P 500 or you know, some other segmented part of uh, domestic equity, um, it, the benchmark is 21.13%, but they only earn 19.6% you know, for the last year. Um, and you can make that comparison all the way down. What, what's not on here is how much of each type of investment 
the fund is allocated to. So I, not giving that information, I can't tell you how much of a real impact that, that each one of those types of investment has had, except to say that in total, um, they earned 15.7% on the year. Um, one of the things that we've heard about over and over again in the last uh, in the last year or so is how great the market is doing. It's up 30%. It's created all of it. That's um, that's that's the market for you know as defined by the Dow, uh -huh. as defined by the S and P 500, um, or the Nasdaq, which is a very specific index. Um, Specially managed funds uh, always diversify into diff different types of investments. That's why we didn't earn 30%, you know, for example. Um, if you flip it over, if you flip the page over, there's a graph. Um, you know, it's a little blurry, but you know, I did the best that I can with it. I could with it. Um, the yellow line and the purple line are a couple of uh, indexes that are commonly used to measure fund performance. And the blue line is IMRF's performance. And what, it's, what this is supposed to represent is the growth of a dollar over time. So if back in September 1980, um, you had a dollar in this fund, and you were subject to all of its management and the downturns and the upturns and everything, you'd have $29. I think it's $29. Uh, $29.68 um, if you were in the IMRF fund. If you were invested with one of these indexes, you would have a lesser amount. $23 for the uh, MSCI All Country World Index and $15 for the uh, Barclays U.S. Aggregate Index. So it just kind of shows, you know, how well overall it's doing. If you have a down year, you know, never fear. It's it's going to come back. As you can see, we had a couple of down years. Um, or down periods, I should say, uh, most notably 2008-2009, uh, um, the market does tend to come back um, over time. So well, that's it. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. You know, this is great news, of course, because as we learned, uh, IMRF is funded by employer contributions, employer contributions, and investments. And it's, it's good to hear that the investment like of uh, that three-legged stool, or whatever they want to call it, uh, is holding up very nicely. So that's good to know. Okay, all right. Um, I'll now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $220,206.18, payroll expenses of $278,316.94, and special reserve expenses of $4,002.20 for total. Monthly expense of $502,525.32. Motion. Second. Uh, any questions? Right, yeah, I, I actually have some questions about the bills. <coughs> I, uh, I actually had, um, I got a copy of the FOIA for the visa bill. And as I, as I looked at it, number one, I would have expected to see the actual, the actual copy or some type of a copy of the bill. Uh, rather than a typed up paper. Uh, you know, whatever you need to do to redact out of, you know, any information that you should have seen. But um, it, it concerns me that I, I don't know if I have everything here. Uh, not that I'm disparaging anybody's uh, you know, character or anything, but it's, it's just... I'm used to seeing things, you know, where I can look at the copy. And then as I started to go through and look at all the copies, uh, over, I think it's over a 12-month period, I was looking and I saw a, a lot of items on here for, for food. And, and so I kind of questioned, I said, well, why are there so many items on here for food? Jewels, corkies. A lot of catering going on, Panera Bread, uh, Costco, Jewel, Jewel, Giordano's. Uh, you know, I, I know 
where I worked, uh, you know, we, we used to get a lot of things paid for, but they, they, they cut that out. And I would hold meetings, and, and I like people to have fun. And I would pay that out of my own budget. So we had an early morning meeting, you know, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, and I wanted to have bagels there. I could buy the bagels and pay for it. Uh, we're working late. You know, we're running behind on something. I get the guys to stay together. I get pizza. And I'm paying for that on my own pocket. And so, not knowing what all the food purchases are for, I just, I, I have a question about it. You know, and I don't know if we, you know, we probably don't have time to, to look at it here, but I think we should, you know, schedule some time to figure out, you know, the Sarpinos, the Paneras, the Jewels, and, and Mariano's, and Jimmy John's. And there's, there's just a lot of food. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I, I'm thinking, well, I'm in the library now. I'm supposed to have food. And if I do have food, I'm getting it from the vending machine. I'm supposed to stay in the library. So I'm assuming that it's, it's happening for different times. And then, again, as I go through, I, I look at a lot of things, you know, for uh, Netflix. And I, I was assuming that we're buying services for films or whatever. But I wondered, well, why would... Why would Netflix be on here? Why wouldn't it just be if you buy movies or CDs? I don't know the process. So they, again, that's why I asked the question. May I answer? Well, yeah, let yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Did you read really done with your questions? No, I'm not finished, but I think let it makes sense for her to, to go ahead. Right. Well, well, I mean, you have a whole year's worth of expenses now, and we're just trying to vote on this month's bill. So mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. That, that's a lot to go But I could, I, could, I could take one month. Okay. Well, well let me just tell you, many of the food things, for example, you said Sarpinos. I can tell you that Sarpinos was, uh, and you would find in the, my director's report, a reference to the Battle of the Books award ceremony mm. that took place a couple of weeks ago. And this, part of that ceremony is that the students and the parents, the families that come, are served dinner. So they're served the pizza and some salad. So that's the Sarpinos. Most of the food expenses there are connected to some program or other. They have gone right back to the taxpayers. As a matter of fact, many of you are from St. John Brebeuf, and so you're, I'm sure you are happy that St. John Brebeuf won the Battle of the Books this year and got their plaque. <laughs> I'm happy no matter who wins. I think it's great it's that they're great. all reading. It's a great program, and when you ask parents to come out for a uh, for it to come bring their kids in for a special event with an author, you, you need to give them some food. So. Um, food and programming go hand in hand in many cases. There is, uh, and, and you'll find a lot of references to pizza there um, because that's what a lot of people like to eat. But I know that the children's librarians, when they have an end of the year party, they will go and they'll buy cookies and things like that for those people. Uh, there also were, um, well, I was just trying to think what else would be. We do host meetings sometimes, so we host CCS meetings here, or no, it's a CCS. CCS is our computer consortium, and so it's part of the responsibility of being part of that group to host the technical group meetings, like the catalogers meeting, the governing board, things like that. And so uh, part of that is that you host and you have breakfast for those people, so that's some of the things there. Can I your question um, about what you were no. saying? I was at something where... They have the movies where a lot of times, like the movie I came to was Mulana, and there were quite a few seniors there also, not just people with kids, and they provide snacks and, a, and like a juice box. So that would be one place the food would go also. So you, you could agree with that or disagree with that, but it's, it's not that we are buying, you know, a lot for the staff, and this is going back to the taxpayers by and large. Um, and you asked about Netflix. Netflix, Netflix is, um, there are a couple of, um, in the teen underground and in the middle ground, there are setups with video games and with the ability to show movies, and so that's what that's for. And there also uh, is, I think, a Netflix account on, is it Roku or? Like Roku's, like right. Or right, the patrons can actually check out and have Netflix themselves for. So, you know, I, there is an answer for every single question that you have about those expenses. Yeah, I'm just wondering is, is why do we need to make those expenditures? Just just like in the business world where you have to meet the bottom line, just like you have to do in the business world, just like you have to do at home, 
Oh, and she went, I'm getting pizza this week because you know what? Dad doesn't have a job, mom doesn't have a job, whatever. So just as you don't uh, take out a credit card and, and put down 2% more in cash, you, you cut back in certain areas. So that's, that's, that's why I'm raising the question. And, and I, I really think, I'm not finished yet. So I, I think, yeah. Just maybe this is a topic you can bring up when we go over the budget and then we can discuss that. Because it's really not, it's, it's it, all the other questions, but it's not really pertinent to this particular. Well, um, it's, it's, it's about how, how the bill is paid. I, I, I would think that we should be able to get a copy of the visa bill in its detailed format. Mr. McCluma foia that after he foia that, which was all pulled from the visa website, and we gave it to him. He's so, got it. It cost us 25 bucks, which we could not pass the cost along to him, but we got it for him. What, why did we dollars to Mr. Marcula's request? Yes, we are. Why, why did because it? Northwest Credit Union doesn't have all of it available to us, so that we had to go and they copied them for us, and they gave us a deal on it. They said, well, since you're good customers, we'll only charge you $25, which we were not able to pass along to Mr. Marcula. So, so the taxpayers are Why can't we money. charge Mr. Marcula $25? It's it's not not I, don't think, I don't think that works that way. Well, it something. seems like it should be. We, the taxpayers, are paying for him to accumulate sure. all this paper. Sure. Why don't you keep the bills when you get All right, it? Mr. Marcula. Can I, I have no, I, I'm not finished. We kind of segued yeah. off there. So I, I think we should be able to get the monthly visa bill for our review so that uh, I think as Dave was talking about, it you know, should be a little bit of a, a review of bills and we should be able to, to have what's in that monthly bill, visa bill, versus getting something for $5,000. I think transparency is what we're all about here and we want to make sure that we're doing things the right way and I know you guys are. I just want to be able to explain to people and say, visa bill, wow, why is it so high? So, I think we should be able to get the visa bill, and then I wouldn't have to bring this up at, at, at this point. Are we so, approving the payment of bills or not? Not yet, because I'm, I'm not finished. Because there's, there's, well, there's, yeah, there's, there's so many line items on here that I've got questions about. You're spending. Well, is there is some reason you couldn't call Thanks. ahead of time to ask some of these questions? Because no, I couldn't. Really I, I wasn't down. doing well. I wasn't doing well. So I, I had kidney stones pulled out, four of them last week, and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing well. So am I. Yeah, probably more so. So there's so many questions about why, why we're spending things here. You know, these programs that don't pull in even 1% in some cases. They're great programs. I enjoy them. I came here to the, to the great Comic Con event, and it pulled in a lot of people. They're great programs. They're all great programs. But you're adding food beverages and everything else to it that drives up costs. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know. Dennis, again, uh, my recommendation is that in our budget review, when we're talking about the budget for next year, let's bring that up and we can discuss it as a board and then we can you make a proposal and then we can vote on it. No, I, 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 it's a good suggestion, right. but I would like to have it on the next uh, on the next meeting as an item to request that we get these on a, on a monthly basis. I mean, we got it right here, so it's. I mean, it's really nice. So, you know, he's got it nice in hand. Well, it's in the room when it's available. Right? Yeah, I, I didn't know. Yeah, for me, well, well, I mean, that's what that blue box is. Every bill so is in, it's listed in the. Uh, every yeah, yeah. Right. again, so we've, we've being the new guy, for some time. I, I don't recall the blue box being mentioned. You know, I oh, could, it could have been. forgotten. Okay. I could have forgotten, right. but I, I did not know that the that that was available to us. Right. Well, and there have been trustees that have come early to meetings just so they can go through and talk. And that is perfectly within their right. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know people were coming in and looking at the box. So yeah. 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 Usually, usually I'm here pretty early when myself. When you have a question, you do. Not you necessarily the day of the meeting. They might come in on a different day. Oh, so it's in here on a. Well, no, it's there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 still don't okay. supply it. So, but there's, there's just a whole host of things that, you know, I. I have concerns about. So I would suggest again that you know uh, Greg and Susan can explain each item, but as to whether or not we should be paying for it, the question of whether or not we should be paying for it should be a board decision, and I would bring up those items to the board. We can all make a vote on it because it's not any one person's specific right. opinion. But but 
you know, we can we can at least make people aware of what's being Absolutely. paid for. Absolutely. Okay. Because okay. we got, you know, Home Depot and Bed and Bath Beyond. Why would we not have Home Depot? He has maintenance to do all the time. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, that's why I just asked the question. I just don't I understand why the, the presumption isn't that the staff is using the taxpayer money. It's wisely. because it doesn't go back to anybody specific in the budget. It does, so it goes to so them. It we, goes we to have them. a marketing, we should have a marketing budget, we should have various different budgets that this well, goes back to. The budget. And nobody, nobody can tell that right now. It goes into a, like a general visa bill. And so you have no idea where it's tied yet. None whatsoever. I encourage you to do that for future meetings. Okay, could we have a roll call on the motion to approve payment of debt? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? I'm, I'm sorry, no. Diane? Yes. Patty? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm done. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, next is the director's report. Um, we have a director's report in our packet here. Susan, mm -hmm. would you like to go over some of the highlights from this past month? Yes, I would be happy to. Um, well, you had asked that in February I um, do a recap of where we are with the strategic plans. So we're going to start with that. Um, the things that we've accomplished in this quarter for the strategic plan, focus one is exceptional customer service, and the first point is upgrade wayfinding and navigation through the physical space. So we have begun analyzing our interior signage. Uh, there are two different groups working on that. One is working on how we put signage for our collections, so that you know what books you're looking at, what DVDs you're looking at. The other group is looking at it's a sort of, a, I think of it as a rooms team that is looking at the general labeling of rooms in the building and whether you can, for example, right now there's nothing, if you're at the stairs, to tell you that this is the boardroom. So looking at some ways to flag, because one of the things that we heard in the uh, strategic planning process with the building is hard to navigate with the four floors and everything. So that's one thing we're looking at. Uh, we also have you know, the product called Communico, and it has a screens product, so that one possibility will be to have live labeling of the room activities using screens outside the window, outside the doors. This is um, a longer term project. This is going to take us a little while. Um, the number one thing that we did in this quarter, and it is going to be the number one thing we do in the next quarter as well, is work on getting ready for our migration from Circe Dynex to Polaris. Uh, the Polaris migration team continues to meet weekly. We put together a Polaris teaching team which first went off and got trained at CCS. Again, that's our computer cooperative computer consortium. Um, they went and got trained, and then they come back. They so far have taught 26 classes to the staff because virtually everybody except, I guess, maybe Dave's team, but everybody else needs to learn how to use the computer for this in some way. So 26 classes so far. There will be many more by the end of the month um, in a bunch of different modules that have to, they have to be learned. They have to be taught. Um, the acquisitions team has just been at CCS for two full days of training to learn how to order books in the new system and keep track of the funds that way. Uh, we have met with our Ingram representative. Ingram is our single largest vendor. Vendor, It's where most of our money goes to because, of course, it is where we buy our books and other things. So we've been meeting with them to find out what products they have that will sync up with Polaris um, that we can take advantage of. We've been working on our public-facing catalog. Uh, making decisions like what's going to go in the drop-down menus and do you want the catalog to look exactly like the website so it's a seamless experience or is it better for people to actually know that they have left our website. And then we also, uh, some of that is going back the other direction too where we look at things on the catalog and we think, well, maybe we'll change our own website. So that's, uh, that has been occupying a great many people for a great deal of time. So that's a lot of what's going on. Um, to continue, we uh, have one point that is develop consistent standards for customer service and I have finally completed what I think of as the who answers what where document. So I'm going to cast that out now and it is a breakdown desk by desk of the skills that would be needed to be at each one of those desks. And then the last piece of it that just got done is on the back of it or the last page is a reverse directory where if somebody comes to you with a question 
um, where what desk you would go to to get that information. So it's all to facilitate cross training, and so everybody, so that everybody has an expression from me of this. I expect anybody that is sitting on this desk to be able to do these things. So the staff receives this. The staff will be receiving this. It's just now gotten done. So um, that's a big piece of the uh, developing consistent standards for customer service. So if you go to one desk or you go to another desk, you get the same answer from both of those desks. That was another point on the strategic plan. Um, we also are looking for um, a way to develop a staff intranet because ours is extremely dated and uh, we unfortunately found out that the first thing we wanted to try is not going to work. So we're going to, on to the next thing with that, but we're working on it. Uh, I conducted a cross-training survey of all of the staff to find out who was interested in being cross-trained to work on different desks because we thought that getting consistent service would be really helped by people knowing what goes on at the different desks and so, you know, and talking to each other about it. And it was actually very interesting to see what people were interested in. I found that nobody wants to be on the kid space desk and nobody wants to be on the tech desk because they both require a certain amount of specialized knowledge. And so the next step with that is going to be setting up a schedule where um, uh, we'll just say like Wednesday mornings we'll be doing cross training and we'll have a person from the department and then more people being trained during that slot. So gradually we'll be raising our number of people that can step in at a variety of desks to we'll make for more flexible staff and also develop our consistent standards for customer service. Um, the next focus was expanded community engagement. I contacted the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning who has been working on the recommendations for unincorporated Maine and Northfield Townships. They tell me that the draft of their plan is written and they will send it to me in a few weeks. And then they introduced me by email to the new contact because the connection there has actually left that job now, which is sad because I always like it when I know, you know who's the person to ask and now I've lost my person to ask. But they apparently do have a draft of a plan that they are going to be suggesting to, to the people in that area. Um, and then the last thing is uh, in that section is that we have, as one of the strategic plan goals, is to budget for community engagement. And I will be needing some guidance from the board on what you want to do with that, how, what sorts of community engagement you would like to see, and um, you know, where, what kind of direction you want to give us in terms of making that budget. So think about that a little bit. Uh, Mr. McCoola has just made it very clear that he does not like some of the community engagement that we're doing and getting people out into the schools. But that is part of our strategic plan. It's actually a goal to do more of that, I just have to remind you. So please give me some guidance about that if you've had a chance to think about it a little bit. Um, we have an investment called Explore Community Partnerships, and we have uh, many staff participating at the village, at the chamber, school districts, on committees, commissions, and so on. Um, the newest information about that is that Susie Wolf is now a member of the Chamber of Commerce Board. So congratulations to Susie and to us. It's a great connection for us. Uh, focus three is st focused staff development. And uh, we, one of the points is to train staff to develop and rely upon data and analysis in evaluating success. And so um, one of the things that we're looking at is starting a program called Project Outcome. It is all to do with setting goals for programs and evaluating whether they were successful or not. This is another thing I hear people asking for. And uh, so um, the assistant head of digital services is going to be going to a project outcome one day workshop at PLA. So that will be helpful to all of us. Uh, we have um, additional staff have now been trained for passport service. And we also had some sensitivity to different perspectives as part of our staff day presentation. but. It was really kind of a drop in the bucket. We need a lot more of that. Uh, focus four, enhanced community awareness and alignment, finalizing the library's name change. The uh, signage project should be completed around March 16th. I think that's when the signs themselves will be finished, and then weather permitting is when they will be installed, hopefully near to that date. But there is electrical work that will have to be done, so um, they'll have to wait till they can do that. And the last thing is evaluate the intent, scope, and content of the print newsletter and we have been unscientifically surveying program attendees with a quick show of hands of programs to find out where, how they've heard about a program. So that we know whether chapter one is actually a way that is getting people into the building and where they're learning about things. So that is what we have so far for the strategic plan for this past quarter. Do you have a question? Yeah, I just got a quick question. I'm looking at the agenda. So 
So we're under director's report. That is my ready. director's report, yes. So this is what people would see if they wanted to come to a meeting. Correct. Right? So nowhere would, would uh, somebody know that you're going to give a, an overview of where we're at. So you're saying you would like to have a more detailed Well, I just think, agenda. I mean, the strategic plan is a pretty big thing, you know, and, and what we're doing with the library is a pretty big thing. And, you know, I've heard some people say that we don't have a lot of involvement from the patrons, and, and I just thought maybe that's a, it's a thought. We may give it some thought. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not just saying it's wrong, but, you know, when I read it, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I didn't jump into my head that, you know, uh, that's what we're going to Office. So you would just like to see that on the agenda, is that right? I, I think there's you some things. The I think there's some report. some things that maybe you should, know, should go there. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that we could probably do that because you have yes, to you. give us an update every quarter. So, so that's what. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. That's a good suggestion. And then I, I like the the idea of getting consistent standards uh, across the board. So the reason for choosing that piece about the, the getting the current consistent standards, the, the thought behind that was. Is is that everybody's kind of working in their own departments and wanting to be able to give the same level of, uh, right. of service to exactly. everybody. And, and so do we have like a current baseline? I mean, do we say, oh yeah, well, we're, we're not doing as well as we should, so we need to move it up a notch. How are we going to know that, you know, we go through our training and that we've got any better uh, consistent standards than we've got? Well, we found out that we, uh, didn't have consistent standards by yeah, talking yeah, with yeah, people, and yeah. we can talk with people again and see if we get better so response. So just after we've done conversations with things. patrons and things. Like well, I think that we need to be more methodical in the way that we approach our conversations with patrons. I have said that since we did the strategic plan, is that doing that once every three years is not enough. We need right. to develop more ways okay. of having conversations. Yeah, yeah no. That's which actually, I'm going to bring one thing up about that in just a minute. No, that was, yeah, so you know, I, I, I applaud you. I think you. Get, getting a uh, consistency across the board is, is really cool. And Great. I know in a lot of places, you know, enjoy it. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. I have um, quite a bit more. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Could, uh, could yeah. I just a couple of quick things of that you've done? Um, the uh, fee that we get for doing house courts, is the government raise the amount that we yes. get yes. reimbursed? Yes. Okay, that's good. Though. Yeah, I actually have all that. I still have mm -hmm. like seven points to go through on my director's report. Okay. That was just the first one. Okay. All right. I've heard it. Go ahead. Start and dance here. Go ahead. Okay. I wanted to, uh, on page 29, I just wanted to, I, I'm sure you all read this, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to highlight the part where Diane Lindbergh was able to talk a vendor down from the original yes. yeah. yes. 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 Substantial amount of money, and we're very happy about that. And then I also wanted um, this happened right before uh, I did this, but I wanted Sasha to tell you another piece of good news himself. So Sasha, can you tell us your piece of good news? Sure. Sure. So as you all know, um, or maybe you've passed by, the baseball exhibit is up, the Sox versus Cubs. It's called Sox versus Cubs, the Chicago Civil Wars exhibit that the staff and the baseball committee have worked very, 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 very tirelessly on, but it's been really exciting to offer something new to the patrons. Um, and it's going to be up from now through the end of May. Um, but I'm excited to announce that we actually have two sponsors for the exhibit. Um, we have an official main exhibit sponsor, and it's the CIBC Bank. They have a branch in Lincolnwood, and we've partnered with them for about two years now. They've sponsored our summer reading kickoff events for the past two years, but I'm very proud to announce that they will be at next Friday's opening reception for the kickoff. They will be presenting us with a $3,000 check for the exhibit. So we're very, very proud of, of that. Right. Sasha, uh, Sasha worked pretty hard to get that. So <laughs> we very, very much appreciate all and So, Sasha, so did you like did you approach them and ask them for this? How, how did it all transpire? Well, I think relationship building is key and they are actually they're all very, very receptive. They want to work with the library. They see a value of being part of the library, having their name attached to us. Um, and they were very, when they were here for the summer reading kickoffs, yes, they donated to offset costs for the kickoff, but we allowed them to have a table in the lobby, so I think them interacting with our patrons and um, kind of talking about their business in return for, for sponsoring was 
must have been very successful. <laughs> mm -hmm. And our second sponsor, and we've also been working with them for the past two exhibits, it's the Journal on Topics newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been working with Todd Wessel, who is the editor of the paper, and also with Tom Robb. Um, they will be offering us um, some free advertising in the journal over the next three months uh, to promote that exhibit. Um, we've had a very successful partnership with them for the past two exhibits, um, and we hope to continue it this time as well. So. Next thing in the report is uh, I just wanted you to know where we are with the passports now. We are actually going to be the hottest number. We have had 206 passports now. So that's going very well. And indeed, uh, the rate on that is increasing on April 1st to, uh, from a $25 execution fee. Sounds very ominous, but that's what they call it, to a $35 execution fee. And I got an email very stern this week saying you, that's not optional. You have to charge $35. So we'll be charging $35. I'm sorry. $35 instead of $25. Yeah, that's just the part that comes to the library. That's not the part that goes to the government. Um, so you're buying over $5,000. Yeah, that is correct. That's yeah, a nice little steady income there. It's a little revenue stream. Um, We're all two, 206 of those new? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we don't get an execution fee for doing renewals. And we encourage the uh, uh, patrons who come in with a, a renewal to self-serve. They don't need us. They can write them a little check, they can send it in the mail, they don't need us to sign anything or stamp anything. <coughs> and, uh, uh, nearly all of them do it. Sometimes we'll in include it, but we're not including that in the account because we don't get any support. Right. All right. Um, I did put in my director's report a little bit, bit about that you were just referring to that some of the libraries have stopped collecting fines. They've started to stop ch charging fines, and what their experience has been and. If that is something that the board would like more information about, I would be happy to put it on the agenda. I didn't want to put it on the agenda on my own initiative because I don't know if yeah. it's something that you're interested can, in. Can we but, just pause for a minute? And, yep. and I, I, you know, we've touched on that in the past. I have mixed feelings about it, uh, but I was wondering if the if there's you know some interest in putting this on an upcoming agenda, we can do that. I don't even know if many people would want to consider it. Karen. I would like to hear the feedback that, that you have, is that what you said, Susan, from other people regarding what they're experiencing? Yeah, it's in the director's report here, that the libraries that are in CCS that have um, already done it, they, they love it. They say that the, it's cut way down on their negative interactions with people, as you would expect. And, um, and they are still getting all their materials back promptly. So it's actually not, the, the downside that they had anticipated did not materialize. Oh, and then I must have misread it. I thought someone had commented by not having fees, it, it um, prevents people from realizing they still need to return items. So no, thought, it's, with this they have not had that experience at all. And, and I will grant you that when somebody has made a decision, they're going to probably speak positively about it. That's human nature. They're not going to come and say, oh, it's been terrible and, and we're still doing it. They're going to defend whatever decision they made. But they were really advocating for people doing it, and two more libraries are getting ready to do it. So I just wanted to you to be aware that that is a trend in libraries now, and if you want more information on that, I can get that for well, you. Well, you know, it's up to you. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think, you know, to have pros and cons and really weigh it out it would be something to consider. I agree. So or we could we could wait a while and see if a few more libraries do it. I personally that's not a bad idea. Um, and then discuss it at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. be interested to see what their policy is on in how they do like, how much how long there is before then that book is deemed lost. Right, you know, yeah, they have. So there must be a policy, and then that book would then, or whatever it is, or mm -hmm. CD would then be put on as a lost item. Well, no, they it goes to collection through. Okay, right. so that would all still be the similar policy that we would very have. Actually, yeah, it's, it's just, just when you have the fines attached. Right, so I think it goes to collection quite a bit for uh, sooner than we would go to collection. Yeah, after reading your piece, it just seemed that. 
you were maybe even questioning that twenty five thousand dollars then that we were going to be getting. Yeah. Right. Well, twenty five thousand dollars is some money. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. no question about that. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I don't uh, hear that anxious to okay. enact this policy right now. We certainly can consider it in the future if anyone mm -hmm. wants to put it on the agenda for future discussions. We can. Uh, but for now, I'll, I'll uh, let you resume your director of this report, which I've interrupted again. <laughs> <laughs> that is just fine. Um, I wanted to uh, reiterate that we do have the VIP event for the baseball exhibit on Friday, March 2nd, so please put that on your calendar. You should all have gotten invitations, and please do, um, if, in fact, if you have not already RSVP'd and you know whether you're coming or not, if you can let Sasha know tonight, that would be extremely March helpful. So we from Friday. We from Friday. Uh, 630 to 8. Okay, 630 to 8. Will we limit it to two people? Uh, I, I'm sure Sorry, that if you talk to Sasha, you limited to could, two people? I think yeah. trustees okay. could get. Yeah, yeah trustees uh, extra. Yeah, they said you had guess, but I mean, you know, Yeah, okay, because see, I, I think I tried to put three at like when oh. it oh, okay. knocked me out. <laughs> and I'm like, wouldn't let me put it in there. So I'm like, okay, one or two, mm -hmm. I don't know what I put in there. Um, I wanted to call your attention on page 35. We have our proposed budget calendar, um, which is basically the timeline of, you know, kind of what uh, timing we need to get in order to have a budget approved in, before the next fiscal year, which is not a legal requirement, but it is the indication we've gotten from the board that that's how they prefer to do things. So that's there. And I wanted to then go to page 36, which is the trustee calendar, and point out a couple of things to you. Uh, you will be getting an email very soon from Cook County Clerk's Office uh, asking you to file your statement of economic interest, um, because as trustees, you cannot have, you know, they don't want people with a conflict of interest. Okay, can you remind me how, what do we do for that? It's just an online form these days, which is very nice, and you basically, for most people, you, you, I mean, you read each question and you have to answer it, but for me, every year, it's always just been, you know, not no, applicable, no. not applicable, not applicable. Well, they'll be sending out that form. They, they, they will email it to you, and they give you a code. And they're going to send us one. Well, and that will be going to your library email, so okay. you do have to have access okay. to that. Okay. But you've got two months to do it, so if you have trouble, let me know, and we'll get you figured yeah, out. you should expect that. Uh, March 1st-ish. Oh, yeah. I was expecting it by now. Okay. I, I, I think I will be at any time now. Yeah, I'll we've be. already given everybody, we've given them the names. So, um, I wanted to, let's see. Oh, I just wanted to remind you that next month's meeting is a week early, second Wednesday of March instead of third Wednesday of March because I'm in PLA. Don't want people to miss the meeting. And then <laughs> April 8th, we have added another. A special event where it is an opportunity for the trustees to talk with members of the public is that on the first day of National Library Week. It's a Sunday afternoon. We'll just do a cake and coffee kind of thing in this room. So uh, I know not everyone will be available, but you are more than welcome to come. And I definitely do want to get some trustees here. I guess at least two of you said that you were available. So, so it is your chance to talk with members of the public and have, and have members of the public be able to approach you. And on that, we are <coughs> uh, yes, anytime. It would be great. Great, thank you. I think what it day is it? It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. It's the Sunday after Easter. Yeah, I, I can send you guys an email and you can apply to that if you want. Okay, okay. Easy. And that is all I can have. Thank you. Um, well, um, can I just add a couple things? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that you didn't have a chance to put this into your director's report because it happened after the director's report went out. Um, but I know that you, Susan, and a couple other board members uh, attended the library, uh, Illinois Library Association um, uh, breakfast, which was on Monday morning, in which there were maybe 20 legislators there. Um, so it gave us an opportunity to talk to them. And it, it, they handed out a sheet which um, um, listed some of the initiatives and some of the concerns the Illinois Library Association has right now and encouraged members to consider them and talk with them about their, uh, talk with their um, legislators about them. And one of the ones um, that uh, I did ask Greg about was um, a change in the accounting method that the uh, state is going to require of libraries. Well, it, they're going to require a certain type of system. And apparently not all libraries are on that system, but we will not really have a problem. 
Do you want to say that perhaps a little more clearly than I just have said it, Greg? Yeah, certainly. Okay. Um, so the requirement uh, will be that all uh, libraries report their financial results at the full approval method. Um, during the year, we do not employ the full approval method. We employ something called modified approval um, uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, including how cumbersome it is to do full parole interim statements. So what we do is something that looks more like a lot more like cash accounting, uh, but it's, there are some approvals involved in it, so we, might, we call it modified approval. Uh, at the end of the year, we convert the books um, through a series of entries into full approval, and that's what's actually audited and presented to the state um, after the audit concludes. And that's what actually gets passed out to everybody around the table and gets posted on our website. So um, libraries that that don't do that type of reporting at the end of the year are going to be required to. So believe it or not, there are several libraries out there that still do cash and still do modified accrual, which isn't generally accepted accounting principles, um, but full accrual is. So we're all set. Uh, I think it was a warning shot to everybody else that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that we're doing. Okay, all right, great. And of course, there's uh, you know other ones you might step back to opposing unfunded mandates and uh, um, supporting that neutrality. I guess that I hadn't really thought about that in terms of how that's important to libraries too. Um, but uh, those were a couple other issues that were discussed uh, at the meeting that were passed out in the handouts that we had. And we got to hear from many of the legislators who uh, got up, spoke about themselves and how they, where they stood on various issues that concern libraries. So, all right, um, and I think you concluded your report, don't you? Had something to say? Yeah, I, I had a, a couple of questions and a suggestion. So, just as we talked about, you know, possibly adding something to the agenda, you know, when there, there's important things to be discussed, I think staffing uh, changes is, is another key change and. And it would be something that people would be interested in. Are we going so you mean like um, if when someone retires or? Well, if somebody retires or if they're hiring new people, if somebody retires and you break it up into three, three uh, part-time positions, things like that. You know, I think staffing changes in general should be the approval of the board and, and not by the, the current director. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, currently, you know, things change. And, and had I not, you know, thoroughly read, as I always do, her reports, her great reports, uh, she fully detailed everything here. It says, Sasha, I, I'm, I'm losing track. Sasha, I don't know how many people Sasha's got working for her now. Uh, it's not a lot of people, I'm sure. Uh, but I lose track. And, and, and I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, I kind of understand, you know, what those staffing changes are. And, and we should probably understand, well, why do we need to have that many, uh, you know, uh, people. So, uh, you know, it sounds like he did a great job pulling in those sponsors. I'm not saying, again, I'm not criticizing Sasha and your job. I'm raising a question. And I'm only raising the question. I'm not saying he's doing a bad job. But when, when I hear that, you know, he's hiring another guy or another person, not another guy, but another person, uh, you know, uh, I think people should understand that we're doing that, but there would be changes within, within the library. And it would be great to kind of throw that down as an agenda item, too. And again, I, I, I really believe that, that the, the uh, approval, you know, for hiring people should come under the, the trustees' uh, realm of, of having a vote on it. Dennis, I was going to ask you, I have, and I think maybe you got also a chart of the staff. It's sort of like a... Yeah, I think uh, it's a board chart. Yeah, yeah, right, it's a board chart. So um, perhaps periodically we could get an updated chart. It's, uh, it's yeah. like a legal size sheet of paper, I think the one that I yeah. have. Yeah. Um, it and it's, uh, it's nice to, it shows you, you know, who works where and, and yeah. stuff like that. So. Yeah, because I, I lost track. I don't know how many total numbers we got, because I know we got full-time employees, we got part-time employees, and then I think we got a thing called subs. And I think I'm doing that right, but I, I don't know how many total people we have. So just for, you know, so if somebody says, hey, you know, oh, he's always pestering, he's dense. How many people did that work with? And you'll be able to say. And I'll be able to say. 65, Joe. 67, 105, 67 FTE. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's like part time. You know, it'd be nice to understand, well, you know, how many people part time wise. Because again, it, you know, we're might just come people are full time in the balance of part time. There are approximately uh, uh, forty five are full time. Yeah, there's probably there's approximately six to eight people that are subs. What's what's a sub? Um, I'm in a bind and I can't cover a desk, so I'm going to uh, call in uh, somebody that we have experience with yeah. that knows the desk in order to do it for a shift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so uh, those people are, are brought in very infrequently, yeah. uh, but they are brought in. Yeah. So it's 45 full, and then I'll do the math later on. 45 from 105. Are the subs? I think the last that? time I looked at full. Uh, the number of people that we pay in total was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 112 or 114. Uh, those are people that have, uh, in the last, uh, in the last year, in this budget year. That have, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to take up your time here. Maybe somebody is it something that I would have to call up and I, I could request they have an email sent to me saying this is what we got. Or because I, I I wrote down a lot of notes here and I I'm not sure what well, I. Well, I mean, I, as part of the budget process, we certainly will be reviewing our current staffing with you. Um, but you know, the board did talk extensively about the point of whether it was the board's responsibility to hire staff or my responsibility to hire staff. Then the board. When, when did they do that again? Was I here at that you time? Before you came. No, no, it's been, it's been a while. That's it why was, I didn't recall hearing. No, but it is it is my job. It is your, I am your only employee. And All of the other employees yeah. are my employees. It's, and, and how does it come to become your job? Because it's board policy. It's, it's the board. It's, so the board voted on it. Yeah. Yes, board made the decision. If you want that to change, you should make a proposal. Oh, I didn't say I want to make a change. I you just wanted to You said that you wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would like that to see it. Yeah. 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 Well, then you need to make a proposal. Yeah. Then we should talk about it. We should take another board vote. Yeah. Okay. So now it's Dennis is finished. finished. I just had two items. Are you finished, Dennis? Uh, I have more. Hang on a second. Here. Go ahead. All right. Sorry. Right. Right. I and I just wanted to call out again. It was great to see that. I, I made a special note here about the CD, uh, the savings of thirteen hundred dollars at the end. And you being Diane, not, not that <laughs> Susan, <laughs> Susan slash Diane. So uh, I, I, it's a, so uh, I just wanted to call it. I was, I think it's great uh, work. She does it all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah, not all the time. Yeah, to get a good bargain. Ah. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, you know, again, the conversion of, you know, maybe that's again falls under your decision that you're going to take. One full time position, somebody's retired, and then you're going to, I thought it'd be broken up into three different. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, as clerks, the clerical ones. And we used to have a lot more full time positions here, and we've been gradually breaking them up as we can to get more we're flexibility we're and reduce the benefits. That way, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're not paying it's, benefits. Right, it's very deliberate. It's, it's oh, not always the best thing, we can't yeah. always do it. A cleric position will be, uh, again, replaced with a full time one. Well, again, that, that helps to understand better too. Because so when I see that, I, as I, you know, I didn't know that you're going to be cutting out those benefits. So my, my, you know, my natural assumption is no. Cutting out those benefits. Well, no. because as you go from full time to, to part time, she says that you don't get that. You, you don't have those benefits for those folks. Well, they don't qualify. Right. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I had in my mind. I said, oh gosh, are they going to be working enough? To where they're going to get, you know, benefits. We try to bring people in at under the level for IMRF, so that's for example. A, that's yeah. a great explanation. We are very it, frugal it, with it, the it. taxpayer dollars. <sighs> but it's good to know. Thanks. Sure, and you are always welcome to call me and ask for questions. Yeah, I, I, I'm always happy to no, I, 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 this is good. I, I make my notes. I come in. I read it. Uh, uh, are you Carolyn. referring to Carolyn now? Yeah. Okay, Carolyn? Okay, yes. Um, um, the one item I wanted to mention was Staff Day 2018. Yes. Um, I realized there was some conflict with Corey, but yeah. I, I liked the topic here for Candace Fisher of Management. Um, her central point was about understanding that we can only change ourselves in the way we respond to things. I think that must have been a great, yeah. a great presentation. So kudos to that. And yes, again, Diane, 
Thank you always for saving money. And then my <laughs> my last um, um, subject is the hiring comments that you have in here for staffing. Um, I know there are several, and um, I just wanted to bring this up again to all of you. Um, as trustees, you know, we are bound by the Illinois compiled statutes. And in these statutes, under 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 to 55, it says, that the board may appoint and fix the compensation of a qualified librarian to act as an administrator of the district's daily operations. The administrator may hire other employees deemed necessary by the administrator, fix their compensation, and remove those employees subject to the approval of the board. So I need all of us to understand again that our role as trustees is to review any and all staffing changes and to approve them like we used to do in the past. And in the past, that would involve having staffing or personnel rather on the agenda and then we would go into executive session and Susan would present all of these staffing changes to us and that's when we would vote. So I understand that we voted as a board, but if you read these ILCS um, articles, we are not to introduce any policies that do not fall in line with the articles of ILCS. So that would not be something we should be doing. We would be in violation of the um, Library District Act. So I want to bring that up again because I think we need to bring this back to where it should be because we are in violation. And I have a copy if you'd all like to look at it because I know you. I brought this Thank up you. numerous times and you think I'm making it up. <laughs> Sorry, my printer stopped working. So there is one copy. This is just the trustee section that you can certainly see the two points. One is about we're responsible for expenses and the other is approving hiring. So unfortunately, I know a lot of you disagree and feel that we are micromanaging Susan, but we're not. We are being trustees following the law. So I, I would have to say, I do disagree with your interpretation that our policies are in violation. Okay, then please and, read the statute. Yes, yes, I will. And we didn't always uh, review every single hiring in the past. Usually we go into executive session. Always. For, you know, for if Nothing we yet. had some type okay. of issue with an employee, if we were perhaps discharging an employee, if there was something of a sensitive nature, we would go into executive session. We did approve the hiring of every employee in the past. Yeah. And in fact, when we talked about that in the past, we decided it would really be difficult because it would slow down our director's ability to make offers of employment. And we would possibly lose some. That's not place. true. That's well, her difficulty. No. Uh, That's, I, that, no. This is a practice that is followed by every board across I, the northern I, suburbs. I, I don't think so. But Call the school that district. That in the past. Call the school district. Call the school district? They have a board. They hire hundreds of people every year. And they don't have their hands tied. And they don't have difficulty. What I'm trying to say is how do you dispute an article? in the Illinois state statute. How, how do you dispute it? It well, tells you, you can, right there. You can delegate that authority to your... You cannot, but again, if you can. read, it, it you says you cannot, to approve. you cannot circumvent what the article okay. says. All right. Fine. Do you want me to read that to you as well? No, no, I don't there's want... There's a state in one of the, the things, I, I'm not that familiar with it, but there's a state that you can delegate? Yeah. No, it doesn't, but I can tell you the word state, state you yeah. can ask. It, do you can't it doesn't say you can, can, and it doesn't say you can't. I'm sorry, school, but just but our just attorney told the board that it was fine, and I'd like to point out to you that the, that the board, it's legal opinion, and the board, Not legal. the board is also in charge of all of the collections, all of the building, all of the landscape, and all of that has also been delegated to me. That's how it works. That's how it works in all of the libraries. Okay, so, all right. Um, I think all right, I can I just add this because you think you can just change rules as, as you wish? 
According to, according, no, because you've already, you've already delegated our responsibility to approve hiring. Carol, you've been doing this the same way for I know, years. and I've been telling you it's wrong for years, okay, since she's become director. Well, Carolyn, why don't you make a motion? We can I don't want to make a motion. I want you to know that well, this is wrong. Uh, yes, but if the board makes a decision, so make a motion. Okay, I need we'll to, I need it, to help you. We'll I need to help you understand how this board help. cannot make these decisions. <laughs> It says right, under. Do you, uh, you have a motion? Can I just explain this article? I, I don't it's need the explanation. Right. No. It's not on the topic. This is not on the topic. This is not on the topic. No, no, right. no, no what was on the agenda was staff director's no. report. Okay, okay, so I'd like to make a motion. You can't well, make a motion on that. It's not on the agenda. So what do I have to do to make a motion for us to now abide by the Illinois State statute? You can put it on next month's agenda. Okay, and who do want? I need to send that to? Send it to me. Well, just put it well, I need it to be uh, written specifically. So if I send it to you, you'll just forward it to sure. Diane? Right. She'll send it to me. Karen and oh, I work sorry. together on the agenda, and I forward things to Diane. Right. She is my employee. Okay, and if you could just um, indicate the agenda item as I email it to you, that would be really helpful. We'll be up to Karen. We'll so you um, you revise my um, my agenda items. Is that why they're not the same as I submit them when they're on the agenda? Well, I don't know that they're revised. Oh, well, it's not what I submitted. Well, I, I don't know what's what? not what you submitted. Carolyn, but okay, but anyway, so it goes to you. On through this agenda. Yes, send it to me. Send it no problem. I will do that. Susan. So. All right, we did the highlights of director's report, monthly statistics, communications, okay. they're in our uh, package. We have a couple communications to highlight. One is on page 41. Um, I promised to make sure that the board saw it. It is the, um, it says, starts out, it is a long-term suggestion the library really needs an underground parking garage. It is indeed a very ambitious suggestion, so it would take a lot of thought and planning, but you know, she considers the parking lot to be dangerous and that we need more parking. So I want to highlight that. I also wanted to bring to your attention that we got a, um, a communications, page 44. We got a donation, a completely anonymous donation this last month. Uh, I have actually literally no idea who sent it. Uh, a donation of $100 with a little note attached. And it was sent by the bank, not by the person. It's really nice that you're that you automatically renew books without holds so patrons are not charged fines. Thank you. Well, so a hundred bucks. That's cool. Yeah, so that's that's very nice. That was very surprising and very nice. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Huh. And that is all I have for that. All right. Uh, any reports from the Friends of the Library? Um, the the last meeting was canceled. Okay. Legislative or rails, anything there? Uh, we talked about legislative rails. I just uh, mm -hmm. there was a meeting and a, a, a meeting that I attended online, and I just want you to be aware that they are starting a new museum pass program, which will be called Explore More Illinois, which is to get passes to uh, various museums and cultural institutions around Illinois. I don't have any more information on that, but mm -hmm. it's uh, something to look for. Those passes that libraries can. Well, we have the museum adventure pass program mm -hmm. here, but that's been uh, we have to pay a fee for that, and this would be completely fee free, and they are handling all of it. So it would be great. If they What's the museum? There, there's the museum. Uh, Rails is starting a new path. A new. No, they're working with the, answer, the, the one that we currently have is called the museum adventure pass. Yeah. That, yeah. That you get half price tickets to the Botanic Gardens or Brookfield yeah, too, things yeah. like that. Had it for many, many years. Yeah. But this would be actually be free to us. So we're all pretty excited about that. Okay, moving on to a new business. I do have a motion to approve serving alcohol at the kickoff event of the Sox versus Cubs baseball exhibit on Friday, March 2nd from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Subject to all restrictions set forth in the Administrative Policy 3.31, Alcohol Liquor Policy. Is there a second? A second, if we're just talking about it. Okay, all right. Uh, does anyone have, have any thoughts on that? I have a question. Uh, so, serving, serving alcohol in, in today's world is different than, you know, uh, we have a multicultural. Uh, 
uh, folks, and, and some are, are not in, in favor of doing such things. And, you know, that would be the last thing that I would want to do is to offend patrons that come to our library and participate in this event. Uh, the other thing is, is again, it's, it's another cost. Uh, you know, I'm not sure where the money's are coming from, so I'm hoping that as we discuss it here, we can get a uh, better understanding of what's happening. Okay. Um, other comments, questions? Yeah, Mike. My question yeah. is, you're just talking for this one event, the VIP right. party. Okay. Uh, it's mostly taking place after library hours. Yeah. I, what I thought we had voted on before that if anything like this happened, it was after hours. So yes. most patrons that the library is closed signed so up anything. for this, they wouldn't be there. Correct. I mean, what's the budget for it? Well, this was what I was going to ask. Do we know how much the, uh, um, I mean, well, we have an estimate as to how much the, the alcohol I don't have an food. estimate for that. It's, we just would be going with beer. We tried to get it from Binnie's, but we needed a 501c3 to get that. And since the friends haven't been meeting, we're, we weren't able to ask them for that. Um, but we did just get this $3,000 donation, and we budgeted for this, uh, for this party. So, and we also had a, don have a donation of most of the food. Uh, from another um, it's a it's a spouse of one of the staff members who works for Sasha. So it's doing hot dogs. It's a it's you know it's a baseball event, so Her it's all extremely cool. informal <laughs> stuff. It's hot dogs and beers. So, the idea. So her husband has a food yeah. truck, so um, he has a lot of community events. Um, they're from out west, but um, we kind of started talking, and she's like, "What she would be interested in donating?" And he will be here actually serving his style of hot dogs. He has his own menu. So um, maybe we try something different. Yep. So everything, condiments, he will be supplying. That's cool. But we will not have to pay for it. Yeah. So, you know, we certainly do not normally serve alcohol at any of our events, but this is, you know, a once a year kind of thing, I think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it would come up more often. But I don't know, I've been to a, little, a lot of events in Niles, and I see a lot of drinking going on. I'm thinking, if we want the people to come, that's an element. Otherwise, they come, they pop in for five minutes, and they're gone again. So, you know, I, I think it adds a fun element to the event. Uh, I certainly understand Dennis's concern about people from other cultures, but um, I don't, this is not an event open to the public. This is a guest list. Can the, the guest list, can, does this include, like, some of the people who have donated things to the library, uh, some of the... It, well, it certainly, yes, it would be the private bank and the journal, and then it's the village trustees, the mayor, um, people, um, park uh, district, the Bellevue Park District, right, yeah. Um, can I just mention some, uh, at our um, Celebration of Cultures, which um, we just had, a, I don't know, a week or so ago, for the first time I learned that one of, um, uh, they call them ambassadors who put together a, a food booth, that their nationality, they don't drink liquor, and I didn't know this, she must have given me 50 bottles of top shelf liquor that her sons and her husband get as Christmas gifts. <laughs> and so so then it hit me, we have a w wines around the world, and I thought, am I insulting them by even having that? So I don't know what the impression is that we would be giving. I would certainly not advertise the, the beer or whatever, no. because I don't know how that affects other cultures. I mean, I was shocked to even know this about this lady who I've known for years. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a, several ways to look at that. I, I presume we'll be serving soft drinks too. Oh, of course. So maybe, yes. maybe root beer. Oh, well. Probably. Yes. 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 Is that a personal request? Yeah. Is there each and I was going to say, and we're chop, where this is a one time, say, we're voting on this one particular event. And if something like this comes up again, we're voting for each particular event. Correct? That's right. Okay, thank you. So, do we have a guest on a number of people? Is it over 100, under 100? The last thing to RSVP is actually on Monday. Um, I think one thing that we tried this time is doing the e-bite way, which is the, you know, the online way. Right. What's nice is when people register, I don't have to get a million emails. Right. So I think we're about probably like 50 or something people okay. right at this point. Okay. Um, but they do have until Monday to RSVP. 
And is it going to be up here yeah. in this part of the yes. library? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Does anyone else have any uh, um, questions or thoughts? Anything? No. I think that it helps, again, to give a better understanding of the size, mm -hmm. the donations that are coming in. It's, it's going to be a closed event. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. still not sure if Father Culture will be there, but you know, uh, it, it helps having that overall discussion. Last one we went to, we had this was it the candy exhibit? Did we? Yeah. Yeah. Candy, we did not have oh, alcohol okay. because there was a pocket of time where we didn't realize that it was not legal for us to serve alcohol. So, at the Benjamin Franklin exhibit and things like that, there were, but then when they actually made a, made a bill to make it legal for a district library, because the municipal libraries always could, but district libraries could not because they fall under the state. And so then the state changed the law. And so we, you guys passed policy that gave, laid out the circumstances under which you would be willing yeah, to serve the law. We, we have not had oh, one. Yeah, and so candy this candy was, no, candy was mocktails. It was, it was basically uh, cups of sugar. Grand Real. Kind of long yeah. 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 Oh, that's the Grand Real thing. Yeah. 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 And that was the Beagle Art Festival. Over the years, we've yeah. had a handful of events. Sure. Mm -hmm. But we have not had one since they passed the new oh, law. Okay. Right. And so this is the first time that the board has had a vote on it. Okay. So, you know, your call. I will abide by what you so, said. All right. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we take a vote? Karen? Uh, yeah. Carolyn? I'm not, I'm not sure. Can I, can I pass? I, I'm not you sure. You can I'll abstain. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Dennis? Yeah, same thing. Patty? No. Uh, Diane? Yeah, that's mine. Yes. Thank you. Patty? Uh, yeah. Linda? Yes. Tim? Let's see how it goes. I'll say this. Yeah, if we if we don't try it once, we'll never know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, yeah. you know, I think many of you have probably already RSVP'd and said you're going to be there, and, and I, I plan to be there. And, um, you know, I think as trustees, it really sort of behooves us to try to cultivate relationships with other public officials and with businesses in particular. I mean, I'd like us all to be able to do something like Sasha did, and that is, you know, bring in a donation. And, but to do that, we, we have heard. Yeah. We, we, you know, we have to sort of cultivate those relationships with people in the community and see them, have, hopefully make them see the library as a valuable partner in the community and, um, you know, work with them in the future. And, and I also just want to say, Susie, thank you for uh, being as active as you are in the chamber. I you know that on and off our library has had someone who's been very active in the chamber, and I, I'm glad you're assuming that role now, too. Thanks. Okay, so next thing on our uh, agenda is um, a motion to approve <coughs> changes to the lending regulation. I have a question. Yes. Does, it, does the uh, we can on our line here uh, the donation to uh, East Main? Oh, that's that was back in communications. That was I, 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 yeah, I I I got a place in my uh, paperwork. There. So. But there's uh. Choir came and played, or was it Sasha? Was that for the jazz? Gemini Junior High came and played some event for us. It, and they we made an honorary. Yeah. Yeah. So this is part That's, of an event? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. kind of like so you're paying for entertain, yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I didn't get it as I read it. You know, I said, you know, I said, well, thank you for the donation. I, so so I understand how you read it like that because when I first read it, I thought, Similarly, yeah. right. but then I realized I actually was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, you know, as, I, as I read it, I said, well, gee, you know, why were they getting the donation? And, and how much was the donation? I had to look back to maybe like $200. Because <laughs> I, I could put you in touch with a, a band director over at Notre Dame. You know, we might uh, just do it just so we can get those people out and about. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, Gemini probably would have done it completely for free, but we do try to you know, be good partners with these places. Okay, so um, we're now at the point where um, I want to know if anyone would like to make a motion to approve changes to the lending regulation. Uh, that's our policy 3.05. Uh, do you have such a motion? Motion. Okay. Yeah. 
We're Is talking about it. So I'll take it. Second. Okay, Did so. Did you make the motion? Uh, Linda, you made the motion. Me. So um, what we have here is actually a chart, I think, shows us um, how this would change. Is that correct? Correct. And the, um, what we see line through, those are the only changes. Is that correct? That yeah. is right. All right, so we're looking at page 51 and here. And bolded. And ah, the bolded. bolded is mm -hmm. added. Is that correct? And the line through is eliminated. So what happens with book discussion bags? Uh, we what? don't have them anymore. We have that's what uh, they became the club reads that are out on the open mm -hmm. shelving on the uh, second floor because they weren't going out very well when they were in bags, but people check them out all the time from the shelf. So and they just that's so we just are cleaning all of these up before we make our transition to our new computer system. So um, and then with the change to the hot picks, it was really getting the practice more in sync with what <coughs> what the rule is because the signage down there says limit three books and three DVDs. And so the paper services clerks were checking out a total of six items, but really the rule was three items. So now we will just change it to be three books three But DVDs. the hot picks are for three weeks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think no, 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 here rather than the, uh, yeah. I tend to go with a friend to, a, to Park Bridge. Oh. Theirs is two weeks. No. Okay. okay. No renewal on this time. So we're ahead of them. Good. And again, the change on the video games, uh, that uh, that was our practice then anyway, just when it was spelled out in the policy, that we were only putting holds for Niles card holders on that. Okay. Cool. Well, does anyone have any question on these proposed changes to our lending regulations? All right. Uh, we have a roll call. Karen. Yes. Karen. Yes. Dennis. Yeah, sure. Diane? Yes. Katie? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, next uh, discussion. What kind of trends affecting libraries? Um, I am going to suggest that we mm -hmm. uh, focus on that for another thing since I did not anticipate that the director's report was going to take the lines of this and we have right. more business. So this would have been um, just something for the website. Right? Correct. It's not time sensitive. Yeah. It's always constantly being updated. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave that another month. Let's skip that then. Okay. 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 And go directly to B. Okay. Uh, Bill Budget Review Practice. Recommendation. Vote. Uh, Karen. Yes. 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 Uh, I think this is the, the third month that's been on the agenda, or maybe fourth. Fourth month? Oh, no, it hasn't been four months, maybe three. I've met with Tim twice, so maybe third month. Um, but I think that's why it should come to a vote. Yeah, all right, do you, have, do you have a motion to make? Um, okay, so the motion would be that we um, um, I would like to request. Well, no, I mean, it should be a motion. My motion would be to have a budget review process in place that would include. Hold on, I apologize. So I was ready to talk about it. Oh. Um, let's see. that would include performance measures to show effectiveness by linking expenditures with measurement. Okay, you want to read that one more time? Yeah. Okay, I would like to propose... Motion to have budget review process that would include... To, um, let's see, that would include um, performance measures, measures to show effectiveness by linking expenditures with measurements. Uh, say it again. She's trying to write it down as the secretary also. Okay. Um, I would like to motion that we implement a budget review process that would include performance measures and show effectiveness by linking expenditures with measurement. OK, 
Okay, uh, that's the motion. Is there a second? To talk about it, I guess, me. Okay, all right. Uh, we have a second. Okay, uh, does anyone want to ask any questions or make any comments? Could you please clarify what that means? Absolutely. Okay. Um, what it means is any spending in the library will be measured. In other words, um, our budget that we review, mm -hmm. the budget information that you receive will include from Greg and Susan a uh, measurement of either um, let's see, performance, which would be employees. You know, we have 50 employees and they been astronomical and did all this in this department, or we've spent $50,000 on in this department, and we will figure, the, he'll tell us what it was spent on and what the end result is. Because right now, we look at, there's no, there's no analysis of anything we do, um, and, and that's what I wanted to point out. Um, the operating, um, if, can I just read this to explain what I learned from Greg again? Um, I met with him and he brought up two points that I just want to share with you. This all started because I asked to see a department operating budget. I learned from Greg that the um, department operating budget consists of the department head's request for the upcoming budget year. So when they submit these department operating budgets to Greg, what they're doing is just requesting next year's items. Um, Greg receives these requests mostly verbally, some written on scratch paper or typed. The department operating budget is not a standardized form. So what that means is they get together whenever and just tell them what they'd like for next year. But the key component to a budget is <coughs> What I also learned is they do not include in their department's operating budget the status of their current budget. There's no um, correlation between this year's spending and any outcomes. So we don't pay any attention to what we're doing with this budget. We're just increasing it next year. And I'm saying we need to put the brakes on somewhere and be able to identify outcomes of all these line items. Okay. Because at first, when you were explaining it, I'm thinking, excuse me, if an event hasn't happened, how in the heck are they going to be able to explain what you want? You're talking about for them to explain what happened the previous year. To say, okay, oh, yes. we met our budget, we did this, we were outstanding, we deserve a gold medal, now can we have our money? Is that basically? Well, actually, we need to understand what worked and what didn't work. Everything okay. can't be working. So okay. what I'm saying okay. is we get no analysis. Okay. And that was, that was my recommendation for having a review process. What I also wanted to mention, I know Greg has always shown us our, um, our budgets on the screen. Uh -huh. It's this huge Excel spreadsheet. So I went through it today and thought that maybe I could um, make some heads or tail out of these budget codes so that we could better understand where the money is being appropriated. And what I learned is there really isn't an identification for our budget codes. So I emailed Susan to ask her to explain what the budget code stands for. Usually it'll identify departments mm -hmm. and, it, and it really doesn't. Our Budget and actually, you know, I don't know if this was helpful, but I color coded the different sections of our budget. Um, I think the first one's salaries, the sec another one is um, general and administration, and there's like buku line items, and we call that general. But you know, our whole budget can't be general, we have to be able to take the budget and earmark it for departments. And we don't do that. So I don't know how this board can approve next year's budget if we don't even entertain what we're doing this current year with any outcomes. And then look at us on another Excel spreadsheet that's just 50 items of dumpsters of money. There's no explanation. That's my concern of why we need a review process. Can I make a statement or oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. My concern here is 
from what I remember, and I might not be remembering this correctly, is uh, the way I understood it was explained by either Greg or Susan that somehow with the paperwork or something that they have, uh, it's not for the program or what it was, it wasn't set up where they could do it exactly the way you're talking about. Um, I don't know if there is a plan out there where they can do it easily, and I'd like to know how much it would cost for us to do this. Oh, we don't need a program. No, I'm just saying. Because okay. if they don't aren't doing this whatsoever, yeah. they're going to have Same. to revamp. What is it going to take to revamp to get to what you want? Okay, well, it's not what I want. Their budget system well, should include some organized process of documented information instead of verbal conversations. We don't have any of that going on at any level in our library, which is kind of frightening. Well, I think what uh, I'd like to hear from is uh, from Greg and Susan. I, you, you've made some comments as to what they said. I would like to hear from them directly. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Susan, to comment first about uh, budget codes. Um, sure. Uh, Diane, uh, rather, uh, Carolyn just said that uh, conversation about budget codes. Well, she, and these are the numbers that appear on our budget. Right. 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 Yeah, she and, asked what uh, the what the numbers stood right. for and I told her what the you know breaking them down into the groupings that you know one would the first sorry page here but it's you know the the account code the fund code the account code the expense code. What page? Account it's not it's, it's any of it's these like the yeah any of these lines have yeah you know, or the budget has and there, like the account number here is what she was looking at. And then she asked for a very detailed list of that. Um, uh, wanted to have all of that linked to, you know, like for example, on page 19, say, um, uh, uh, these are all Ingram Library Services checks. They all were cut to account number 0144134400, books adult. And that's the information that I have. That's, I don't have more information than that, and Carolyn was not satisfied. With no, that's answer. not entirely true. I asked you to explain what the budget code stands for. You said the first two digits were the fund. The next four, I'm not sure if that's some kind of category, and then the last two are what the expense is. <coughs> And I gave you two budget code numbers right. and asked you to identify them, but you didn't. So then I sent you an email and said, can you just give me a list of your budget codes, which is customary in any business, that lists what the budget code stands for. She told me these budget codes are over 20 years old and nobody knows. So that makes me wonder, how are we putting you know, pockets of money in a budget code? Carolyn, if, if you look at the budget, though, mm -hmm. you can take the budget, too. You can go down and see what each one of these numbers are. Okay, so uh, give me an example. Salaries? So like, uh, oh, you know, O one four one nine zero dash four one dash zero zero substitute. So what's forty one ten? What's what does that 41, mean? Forty one. Oh, which one are you looking at? Forty one ten is a library director. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? Materials. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Forty one I mean, ten you can look is at what? The budget. No, no, that's what, not what it means. I'm looking in the budget. Oh, I know. I'm budget looking at budget. this year's budget. I'm looking in the budget. Now, what does 4110 mean? 4110 is it correlates to the and library director. Susan, what does 4110 represent? It, it represents the line for the salary of the director. It's right. called. Library director. Library director. So forty one ten is is so forty one ten is what the director, and yeah. forty one is what salary. It's forty. The forty. Do you understand what I'm asking? How you should be able to identify but the budget? We can. It is. It's, it's, right it's right there. Forty one. It's right here. Director. I mean, you can look up any number here in the budget, and it, it correlates to a certain type of expenditure. Okay. So then, okay, but so each each word that you put in your Excel spreadsheet. You've given it a budget code, and that budget code is just supposed to represent that name that you're giving it. That's kind of not making sense. If I wanted I to pull perfect sense. Okay, if I wanted to pull youth services, what code am I pulling? 44? Am I pulling 4414? Which one identifies? There books? is. It is not coded by department. It is coded the way it's coded. It's called books, youth services. Right. So there's a line. Which for number books. is youth services? 
There is no number youth services. There is a number books youth services. So which number, 4414, stands for books or 44? What one is books? Because up we here, 4110. 4414 44 zero. That's what we have for books youth services. I know, that doesn't I mean, make sense. I think you're looking for the one, looking for like the section of numbers to be a specific thing instead of ours is all line items is a specific thing. Right, never saw a budget yeah, quote in my life that, well, she said the two digits are the fund. That makes sense. So what are the next four digits? What did you say? That, that is what corresponds to the specific line of the budget. So adult books are 4413, children's books are 4414, teen books are 4415. And that's okay. on the, every single thing that you get has that information on it. Okay, so. And as we established, mm -hmm. Greg knows what he's doing. Everybody knows what they're doing, but you can't help me understand these figures. I don't so, think there's anything so there youth that's services. not crystal clear. So, oh my God, this whole budget isn't. Book services, books for youth services is under this number. Now, where do I get all the other youth services charges out of this entire budget? There's 50 some line items. They're all just separate lines, separate identifiers, and they represent money. But we cannot coordinate or correlate any of these line items to come up with a total. Okay. And the total and is right here in our budget. Okay. It's no. right here. All right. Black and white. No, the and we get all right. this every year. Here's what I'm trying to say. If, if I worked in a library or in a school and they had a department called Youth Services, my budget code would probably be for my department 4414. And the last numbers in the budget code would explain hospitality, um, supplies, um, books. But you don't have that. We don't have no, that. And that's fine. Have, and we never have. Okay, so. and what I'm trying to say is now we have 58 line items with 58 budget codes, and we cannot tie any of this together to come up with outcomes as far as what we spend our money on. Well, we just, Carolyn, maybe you can't, but I, I think most of us can look at this budget and see what we budgeted and what we spent last year. That's all you we know. We budgeted this year for each one of these line items. We 60, go down and you can look at any single line item. All right, you spent 173000 on adult books. Is that all you can give me for 173000 That's the annual budget. So I don't know what well, more than that you would want. I know. I mean, what did you spend it on? Well, do you want the They're name right of every book? There. What is it for? I mean, I don't literally don't. Well, really here's what I'm want. thinking. One hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars is a it's a large number, and I would think in this department, and I said this to Tim, aren't there sections of books? Did we spend a hundred thousand on languages? Did we spend a hundred thousand on Black history? Would How you, do you figure out what be, you're doing? That would be extremely time-consuming oh services God. to be coding that this book went into the picture books and this book went into How the readers. How do you readers. order? So, you journals. just, okay. you just so, pick, so, so, go on with the, the oh, you would ask me about the budget so cards. Right. Okay. And so then the other, you would ask me also what else I think. And the other issue yeah. that I have with this is that there is no point in this budget process because this is all like a merry-go-round that goes round and round and round and literally never stops. We are planning the fall programs at the end in the spring. It's all going in a circular way, and so by the time they are submitting their budgets, we are only halfway through the budget year. Oh, there is fine. no way that they could give you what you're looking for because half of it hasn't even happened yet. You have your previous so year's programs. So for the programs, where do the programs actually get listed? The list of the programs that well, are... You know, in. so... Would it be on the programming it. and support? Yeah, but you're talking about like in the budgeting process, right? It well, would, no, so for for instance, the outreach program, where where is it? Outreach is not a program. Outreach is a service. A it is so, programs so are different. story hours, battle of the books, Senior coffee hours there, the things that people come to the library to do or participate in. So we're so, using program in a different way from the way that we use so, it here. So where does is, where is that service Outreach go? is not broken out as a separate service. Uh, we don't have services listed in the budget separately. They are There are staff members that are in their pay grade, so their line is that. So, I mean, at any time, if you, if you look at... Some of the things that we're doing, like you think, you agree with Mr. McCullough, we should not be working with our schools anymore. 
You should quit well, that. I, you should I, ask I, that for that to be honest. I've never said, I, I, I as a trustee do not think it's right for me to tell you what to do. Actually, that kind of services is one thing that you will find in the Illinois State Library Code. That is your job. I, I, you don't, want, I don't want to tell you what to get rid of and what not to. What I'm looking for, what I'm looking for, it is, it is my job to a point, but if you had a budget to say that uh, the, uh, the outreach program is, is done by this group and uh, there's this many people in it, you know, I get, uh, there was asked last year, rather than increase the, the, uh, the levy, uh, why can't we just do a, a percentage cut? And he was told, oh, we can't, it, it'll take us forever to figure out. But by having a budget by the department, we didn't say that. No, I recall that distinctly because I was there and another gentleman was there. And it wasn't done here in the meeting. It was done afterwards because somebody wanted to say, hey, can't we just cut the budget by 1%? And again, he was told no and told to go away uh, in so many words. Well, you can't just cut the budget by percent because then you've got like the electricity no, so, being so, cut so by let's, let's get back to the piece of trying to understand. You know, uh, you should be able to look at your, your, your budget by department and say, oh, well, yeah, well, certain services aren't listed in your budget, but you should have something that says, for this particular space, I have this many people. I'm doing this many services, this many programs. I have this many uh, adult uh, books, DVDs, etc. And if I had to make a cut, if it had entered into my mind anywhere to make a cut, I could look at my budget and say, "Here's what I have. I have five people doing outreach. You know, do I need to have five or not? I don't care if you do it or not. At this point, I really don't." I, I think you as a director and him as a business manager, you guys get together, you guys decide. But when somebody comes to you and asks you, can you do a 5% cut? You should be able to look at it and say, yeah, we can. Or maybe, no, you can't. Or no, you can't. And here's why. You know, because, right. because these many programs are pulling in, you know, less than 1%, we've got to have these. I think, I think if you stand there, you say one yeah, I'm using it as an arbitrary. Uh, just 580 people, what? which is, which we have. Uh, I think the only program that going back there are two programs. <coughs> one was Maker Fest, which which beat that, and and one was Fandom Fest, which beat that. Okay, so uh, we don't have a room that holds 580 people. At the, and I, her program is set to go in some cases on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, you know, maybe you're not all going to be there on one day. All I'm saying is, is that we're here to serve, the library is here to serve, not we're here to serve, but the library is here, here to serve the, the Niles Main District. And in doing so, you're, you're pulling in monies from that district, you should be serving all of Niles Main District and not just a select group. I, I put forth that if you were to take any of these programs and stick them in a store next door or across the street from the library, I'll guarantee you, you would go out of business because people would not pay to have those services. They come because they're free, because we're giving them food, because we're giving them drinks, because we're giving them free supplies. That's why people are coming. I would love to have all that free stuff for myself, you know? And your children did have that. And when they came and did Battle of the Books, and your wife was a battle coach for many years, as I recall. I and so you did have that. Yeah. That's a thing that people came to the library for. Right. I, was not, I was not a trustee at the time. And I did not certainly look at what the budget was. I was totally oblivious right. to you what it takes to run to, to, to what this takes. What's your, t what's your pay to make this work? And I, I say, well, why 1%? Because somebody has to pick a number. Okay, all right. That's so, viable. No, 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 not no, all right. You do this no. to Carolyn all the time. You cut it you off know, when it gets, when it gets to cut it off. You know what, what? Because it's 9 o'clock? No. Well, I'm you know, sorry. Really, there's a motion on the table. And we <coughs> need to yeah, finish this. Diane, you haven't right. said anything. Hardly. Well, I'm sorry they haven't. Say something, Diane. I, 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 I still, still, I still have the opportunity have more to talk. More than enough time to speak. No, what, what, what is it? Diane enough amount of time. Tell me what is enough amount of time. Well, the amount of time you've already taken. Diane, please. What do you have to say? Can I have 
Because, because I want to see how this is going to roll after we get off of this meeting, that's why. Well, you know how it's going to roll. Yeah, five to two. Okay. Then why? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Hi, I'm Nina Patrick. I've been thinking about this a lot since the last meeting because I thought what you presented was a valid question. Yes. But since then, and after thinking about it, Closely, I decided. Uh, well, I haven't decided, but um, I think it was quite inappropriate the way you did present it. it didn't Pre help your what? case. What this, um, the the one percent no, or the the no the just everything department? that you said at the last meeting. So I just what? I I thought about the things that you said at the last meeting. I don't know if you want to can you be more specific on the Um. Yeah, as far as we should, um, Greg and, and um, Ms. Lemke should provide a, a line budget. I remember that being said. We have a line budget. That's not what we need. No. Yeah. We need a specific that. expanded line budget. Oh, that's okay, you asked for an expanded yeah, line budget. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, whatever. What you what are asking is for detailed budget. A budget review process. Well, if you look at her process, um, there's no review of any information. No, there's not a specific line item review. No, they, Greg they admitted he doesn't even get information from the departments to well, review. I, Why don't you let that answer? He speak. didn't say that. Well, he, he did. I just repeated what he said. We'll ask them on your yeah, document. Yeah, you could ask them later. I'm sure that they contact the department. No, they don't. Okay. I just took, they know. You don't listen. Stop interrupting. Let her finish. Please go ahead and finish. Of course they talked. I mean, she has it right here in her budget process oh, under God. the staff. She meets with them. Yeah. She, they, they talk. talk about they costs, talk about. they talk about mm -hmm. the budget. Yeah, let's please just, I mean, let Diane speak, and Diane, just address the rest of us. And yeah. If we we'll looked at every single item and expanded on it, it would be very difficult. To I do. didn't ask for that. It's not what I'm asking. Okay, let's turn the right. attention. Let's turn our attention to the motion. Hey, can I ask Greg to clarify what you seem to think is my misunderstanding of what they told me? This all started because I asked. All right, Carolyn. Well, Carolyn? You don't get a chance. Greg, to talk. is there anything uh, that you want to clarify or not? I, I really don't want to say anything. Okay, fine. Okay, so what does that mean? Say? What does that mean? Wow, I'd really like to get a chance. To Why does it, how come we don't all get a chance, Carolyn? Why is it all? Okay, I'm trying to understand what she asked Greg well, and I think, just want to talk about. I think that we receive enough financial information from the reports every month. I feel that their budget process it has been explained. They calculate. They review the budget. There's no... No, you don't understand. It's fine. No. Okay. okay, no. Okay. Um, and another thing is, I would hate to um, determine the success of a program merely based on its finances. Oh, I mean, just looking at it. Who said that? I think the things that you insinuate. No, I think you need, I think you don't understand the budget process. Mm. No, Carolyn, I don't think she Carolyn, should accuse me of insinuating. Look, Carolyn, yes. you are not speaking now. You She's do not have the floor. Let Diane finish. And Go right then we're going to hear from Tim. Diane, do you have anything further to say? Uh, let's see. Well, outside of, I think that. Um, I am totally satisfied with what we are presented with. I have total trust in what they do. Talk about faces and eyes, Dennis. Yeah, no, I agree. Everybody here at the table does it. Everybody. Not everybody. Don't, don't let me say that. My buddy, <laughs> Susan Diane. Well, I'm glad to know Diane it's not Diane. just me, Dennis. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. It's not <laughs> right. I don't really, we're not doing general conversations now. Any Diane, the anything items, further to say? I don't think it's necessary. I think it's our responsibility to trust them, and, and this is what we hired her for to um, prepare a budget for us to examine and approve if necessary. 
Okay, Jim. Okay, uh, the resolution as it's worded is to have a budget review process in place that would include performance measures to show effectiveness linking expenditures with measurements. Unfortunately, Carolyn, I think it's uh, a little too broad because as it's written, uh, that means every expenditure would be linked to a measurement. We got a lot of expenditures, janitorial supplies, copiers, mileage, consultants, kitchen supplies. I don't believe that this is a uh, even close to being doable as it's written. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, well, basically, because uh, we are voting on this on this resolution, yes. this yes. specific yes. resolution, yes, as it is specific uh, motion, as it is specifically written. And if we pass yes. this, we're we're really painting ourselves in a terrible corner because we can't uh, trustee expenses. I mean, how, how do we how do we have a measurement that links to trustee expenses or telephone? Well, how do we have a, we can't possibly, it's, I believe that this is written that is uh, completely impossible to implement. And how would you revise it? Okay. Um, my, it's not my job to revise your, uh, your proposal. All right. Um, and do I have any other, well, other have, comments and, and on the motion? On this motion? No, I have no other comments on All this. Right. Is there anyone who hasn't spoken, and that would be you, Linda. Any yeah. comments on the motion? And my, my comment would be, um, I would wonder what is the criteria of the measurement itself. Um, because I think measurement is a very vague concept and I I would need to actually have know what that criteria means and what we wanted within that measurement. So that's okay. all I have to say. Thank you very much. And okay. all right, all right, Patty, uh, okay. are you done? <clears throat> or all right, what, what do you have to say? I would just like to say, I agree that the way it's worded with measurement, it's too broad. I'm not quite sure exactly what it means. Okay, all right. Per perhaps and I'd like to take a roll call. Perhaps we should have a reword that. No, let's just take Why a roll call. Why not? We've reworded we motions call. before. So how would I reword it so maybe more than I, one I person would maybe vote maybe for it? I don't know that it would. Please take a roll. Right. Then let's no. table it. Well, no. Well, it's been seconded. No, it's already in the middle of a vote. No. Wow, you're impossible. I I'm taking a roll call. There, go ahead. Yes. Okay, Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. With uh, a question uh, that... Uh, Did you say yes or no? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? I'm sorry. Are you voting yes or no on Carolyn's motion? The motion to have the budget review process that would include performance measures to show effectiveness by linking expenditures with measurements. No. Okay. I'm not pleased with the wording, so I would have to say no. Linda? No. Ten. No. Motion. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, the next agenda uh, item. Is, Can I just um, say one more thing? What's that? I know that some people will be displeased with the recent vote. Please let it be known that according to Robert's rules, according to our trustee facts file, according to everything correct, you had the opportunity to speak your motion. You failed to win. It's time now to gracefully submit, recognize the action that has been taken according to Robert Jules, cheerfully assist, and then be quiet until you can secure a different vote next time. In other words, I was denied my opportunity to fully give my information. So I agree with Robert's rules totally. I don't agree with the fact that I was given my full opportunity to speak. Uh, okay, we we, we, right, we wanted right. an opportunity to table 
and then we were denied the opportunity to the table. And you know, I think when people want to work together, I think we should work together. Uh, when we want to work uh, against each other, you know, uh, I, I I I agree that that that, that, that uh, statement that you put out there seemed a little ambiguous to a number of people, and, and I think it would, would have been wise to go ahead and table. Unfortunately, you couldn't do that. So I, I, I agree with everything that Robert's Rules does. I, I use it all the time in all my meetings. So, so how, okay, can I just okay. ask you a question then? So at, you've mentioned Robert Rules, but how do I fulfill my obligation to the Illinois state statutes that I'm responsible for the spending of this budget? And we cannot come well, to Carolyn, an agreement. I suggested to you earlier in the meeting mm -hmm. if you wanted to put some motion on next month's agenda relating to 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 dash 55, you are welcome to do no, that. No, that's not my question. My question is I'm obligated to Can follow the state statutes. If you wish. I would like to do that. What is it exactly you want to put on? Exactly what you said. No, but what, what about it? <laughs> I, want, I want to have that opportunity to uh, have it on next next meeting's agenda. Uh, I think oh, we no, 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 no. can't discuss the entire Illinois Library Code. No, no well, just the specific it, one to, um, to um, what was it, the expenses and, and uh, your duties versus ours. It's just two um, sections. But what I'm trying to say is, I understand Robert's rules, but if I'm obligated to the trustees to be able to produce a budget that I can review and approve, and you don't want to create a process for that to happen, what happened to my position as a trustee? I can't just smile and we say, give me more process. nonsense. We have a process. We don't have a review process. Okay. Can we put it on next month's agenda to discuss? Oh, no, please. No, no we've discussed I mean, this. All right, here's what That's I would like. Yeah, the Illinois has right. discussed it. Yeah, the yeah. Illinois thing, word okay. it the way that you feel comfortable with. Oh, no, it's just, I'll just write what it says right in the statute. Then put it in the next But what I'm trying to say is, if you think that you can just vote down a statute, just like you can find it unnecessary. Uh, are we going to discuss this next week? Yeah, we're going to discuss this next week. I don't understand the point. I mean, we we'll right. just waste our time. So, uh, do we have any un unfinished business? Right, or other. All right. So I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, can I have an other? I have a question. What is it? For the upcoming budget process and the um, department operating budgets, which you'll be receiving again, Greg, from the departments. Is that true? Like usually in March, that was the date for last year. Mm -hmm. So what will they consist of this year? Will it be different? Uh, we don't get paid for we ask uh, uh, we ask for information from the supervisors who may provide it. So the information that you're asking, just so I understand clearly, is what would they like in next year's budget? Yeah, come on. Thank you. Okay, but we do not include in the department operating budget their current year's expenses and outcomes. Is that correct? Well, in their current, but we have that already in the budget. The is that correct? Statements. That so they don't submit month. that to you. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, you know, I mean they they've only spent half the year's budget. Or actually, by that time, maybe uh, uh, eight out of the twelve months. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know what you're after. Well, I'm after what everyone else is after. Everyone's budget preparation process isn't the last day of the budget, and they can provide their their business manager with their operating budget for the previous year to show how they fared against their items. Or maybe as the most part, they don't have an operating budget. So we don't have one by department, so we can't even I've, I've, ascertain yeah, I think that's those costs. Established, and you've asked for that many times. Okay, Sorry. well, I just wanted to make sure because because I want Trustee Olson to understand I'm not making this up. We don't even receive this information. But thank you. Okay. So motion to adjourn. Uh, motion. Second. Second. Third. Thank you. Um, is it Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yeah. Dennis? Yep. Dan? Yes. Yeah. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yeah. Yes.